Hey, how you doing? You like making maple syrup as much as I do, probably, right? But there are those nights where you're boiling sap and you're like, okay, this is a little like watching paint dry because you have to remove so much water to make the good stuff, right? This is a DIY reverse osmosis system I put together. And with this, you can remove up to 50% of the water out of your raw sap. Nice, huh? Let me show you how it works. Who is that, huh? Hi. So this is a lot of information, but please stick around to the end. Watch the whole thing. There'll be some more information below the video. Um, I owe a lot of this to the people at mapletrader.com. They have a really great discussion group there, and especially a gentleman named Hoder Scoob. I think I'm ruining your name, I'm sorry. Um, just super giving of information, and I learned from them, so I wanted to share with you how we can take raw sap and make concentrated sap. When you think of reverse osmosis, you think, oh, it's a water purification, right? Right, but what we're doing here with our reverse osmosis is we're, we're hacking it backwards. Uh, instead of making purified water, we're taking the stuff that the purified water throws off, which is our, pure, our concentrated sap, and getting rid of the purified water. But we're taking the impurities that have been removed through reverse osmosis here, that's our concentrated sap, and we're boiling that down to make this, which is the whole goal, right? But my goal is to reduce my boil time. So I invested a couple bucks into a DIY system here. Quick overview here, we're taking raw sap through a pressure boosting pump that brings it up to 100 PSI, running it through a sediment filter. I ran out of filters. You want a five micron filter. Links will be below for all this information. So then from our sediment filter, we are going through a series of reverse osmosis membranes. Big word there. And at the bottom of each reverse osmosis cylinder is clean water and concentrated sap. Clean water, concentrated sap. Clean water, concentrated sap. These are the membranes that fit inside, oh, they actually go like that. They fit inside each of these. As that sap goes from through membrane, through membrane, through membrane, through membrane, we get our concentrated sap and our clean water. The first time you put this together, I suggest putting it together really loose because you're gonna make mistakes. I, you know, I make mistakes every day. So there are several ratings, uh, basically how many gallons these can process in a day. This is the key to your system. Don't cheap out on these. I'll link below to some I like. And I have mine wrapped up in plastic because um, when you store them off season, store them moist in plastic in your fridge. Who loves maple syrup here, huh? Yeah, I bet. You don't want to throw away your clean water. You really could bottle it and call it maple water if you want. <laughs> I've seen that. But you use your clean water, wait for it, to clean these membranes because as you run sap across these, these filter out the um, particulate, I call it, but basically the sap, but it also gets junked up with, well, let's just call it crud. And these have to be cleaned after every sap run, after every a big barrel of sap that you run through this, you have to clean these, all four of them. And depending on how geeked out you wanna get, I have a really simple way, which I'll list below, but you could argue all day about how to clean these, but you have to clean these and between sap runs, in other words, between barrels of sap you're running, you should rotate them. Ideally, the pressure is at about 100 PSI. Your raw sap tank, when you're setting this up at first, you want your raw sap above the pump motor because the pump we're using is a boosting, pressure boosting pump. It's not a, it's not like a well pump where it can rise a lot. What is that? What is that? All right, you guys go play. All right, if you haven't wrapped your head around this yet, that's okay, it took me a long time, I have. Well, I have paper, we can do a drawing. Art time. 
paper. Maybe it's better that way. This is actually from my sandwich today from the deli. Multiple Sharpies, this is always fun. Okay, you've got, this is the RO filter. And it's in a pressure casing, basically. Kind of like a nuclear reactor. <laughs> and at the top we have, this is clean sap coming into the canister and it's being forced through the filter and your sap is at 100 PSI coming into the containment vessel, let's call it. And water molecules are small enough to go through the membrane. They can permeate, they can permeate this reverse osmosis filter membrane. That goes into the center and that is released as pure water, okay? And the rest of the material, the rest of the parts of that sap, which are the minerals, the sugars, um, the good stuff basically, since it can't get through here, it is pushed out here. It's not able to go through the reverse osmosis membrane, so it exits down at the bottom, and that is the concentrated sap. So this process is what's going on in each of these containers here. Sap is coming in the top, water is being pushed through the membrane, concentrated sap is coming out the side, kind of cast off from the membrane. But that's what we want because that has the magic concentrated sap. This is going on in there. This needle valve is at the end of our concentrate, our sap concentrate line. In other words, um, whatever it else would consider the wastewater, but that's what we want is the good stuff here. Get the brass valve, don't try a plastic one, it just won't work. But what this controls is how much raw sap goes through the system. If this is wide open, it's just, it's not gonna go through the filters. It's just gonna run right over to the concentrate barrel, which what we don't, that's, that would be bad, in other words. But you dial this in very slowly, and what we want to achieve is, I wrote it down, hold on. It's hard for me to put this into words, so just bear with me. Um, you want to dial this needle valve down such that you're getting one cup or one part wastewater, in other words, our concentrated sap, to two parts or two cups of clean water coming out the clean water hose. Let me, let me show you. Er, stop. All right, you build out your system, you set it all up, turn on the pump, using your brass needle valve, you're going to adjust the system that the gauge reads 100 PSI, and then you let it run, put your tubes into two empty mason jars, and see how much pure water you have versus concentrated sap. And the ideal ratio to start out with from the get-go is one part concentrated sap to two parts pure water. Does that, does that make sense? Let me know. I'm struggling to explain this. I know how it works in my head, but um, maybe I'm not doing a good job in the video. You will let me know, I'm sure. All right, there's one caveat to this whole system of making this with this. Your sap that you start out with has to be above 40 degrees. And you're like, but when we boil sap, it's not usually 40 degrees outside, right? So what I do is I take a, a big barrel like that, put it in my basement, and I pump it full of my collected sap, or I just, I dump straight into that. Um, and it warms up enough that overnight, I can run my system to make this into this. Uh, it makes it all worth it. <laughs> it's really good. So I made a number of mistakes while first building this, and you will too, so don't get too wound up about it. I mean, life isn't perfect, neither is Garden Fork. Let me show you a couple of them 
that I screwed up and mainly pay attention to the flow arrows of your equipment like this pump the flow is going from here to here but then with this uh, sediment filter the flow is going from here to here and that's why I on purpose made all these hoses really loopy just a lot of space in case I'm like uh-oh you know but the whole idea of reducing the amount of water you have to boil out makes it a lot more fun to boil your sap. So if you want to stick around, I have some homemade evaporator videos, tapping trees, some other cool maple syrup stuff floating right here. Why don't you and I spend some more time together? I'll see you in the next video.